committee to order. And are, are there any further boards, committees that need to be called to order? Slide four. All right. Uh, what a crazy crowd. Um, <laughs> just a couple comments to start, and then we'll get into it. So, uh, good evening. Um, welcome, everyone, to our Fall Financial Forum. My name is Eric Burkhart, and I chair the Finance Committee. Uh, we are a group of nine appointed Reading residents who review and discuss the budget and other financial matters of the town. We advise town meeting on these matters. We represent a wide variety of finance and business experience, but our common interest, I'll take this out so I don't have to lean over Mark, is uh, the financial well-being and stability of Reading. Um, we do have a few new members, so I'm going to actually introduce all of us. Uh, I think all of you know all of us, and all of us know all of you, but uh, for the, those watching at home. So two new members on my left and the far left is, is Dan Dewar and, and Sean Brandt. Really glad to have them on board. Our other new member, Returning, I think, to FinCom is Karen Herrick. Um, we just found out actually that there's a bit of a um, medical issue that in her family she had to attend to, so we wish her and her family the best, but she couldn't make it last minute. And then um, the veterans here on my right are Mark Doxer, Paula Perry, Ann Landry, and, um, and Mark Mall. And uh, Paul McNeese is also on the committee, and he'll be joining in a bit. All right, so one trait that FinCom strives for and that other boards in the town administration also strives for is transparency. And it's in that spirit that we hold this financial forum tonight. And tonight you'll hear presentations by the town manager and the town accountant that review revenues and expenses for fiscal year 18, that's last year's um, fiscal budget. And we'll look how we're doing with revenues and free cash in fiscal year 19, that's the current fiscal year, which comes in June. And look ahead to fiscal year 20's projected revenues and accommodated costs. We'll then look out uh, further ahead as we review the 10-year capital plan, and we'll also flag the likely future expenses that are not currently funded. And we lay all this out for you uh, for the sake of transparency because we want you to take the long view with us, engage in a conversation, and ask any questions that you might have. We'll then turn the discussion to the use of free cash in the fiscal year 20 operating budget. Uh, as it does every year, the Finance Committee will consider the appropriate amount of free cash to use to balance the operating budget. And we do this because we budget conservative. Right? We guard against an overestimation of revenue while assuming full spending of all budgets. And this con conservative approach can, can crowd the operating budget, so we use a modest amount of free cash to relieve some of that pressure. And in recent years, some of the free cash used in this way has been regenerated from additional revenue or lower spending. So the estimation that we must make each year is how much free cash is reasonable to use given our policy around target amounts and given our best estimation on what could be regenerated. And finally, at the end of the meeting, the committee will vote on the finance-related November town meeting warrant articles and review the minutes from our last meeting. At this committee's last meeting a couple weeks ago, we put together the plan for tonight's financial forum. And as we finalized the agenda, I asked if there was anything else that we should consider for tonight. One of my colleagues asked, how do we get as many people to turn out as possible? Right? Yeah. Now, I remember last year's fall financial forum, the room was packed. Right? We enjoyed that level of attendance, and we hope for it every year. Of course, we all know that we were in the middle of the override discussion uh, last year. The override passed, and we're now much more financially stable. But our rigorous budget review and scrutiny of every dollar spent needs to continue. Last year, the voters of Reading resoundingly approved an additional investment in public safety, the schools, elder services, and other town staffing and department needs. And we want the residents of Reading, no matter how they voted in April, to continue to be a part of that discussion going forward. So thank you to everyone who did come out tonight. Uh, your questions and comments and engagement are, are, are very welcome. Now, it's my firm belief that there are another, say, 600 people watching on RCTV. Um, yeah, and 300 more will watch uh, the video on YouTube this weekend. Or if not a firm belief, it's a fervent wish for that level of engagement, right? And the discussion that would result. So to, again, all of those who are here or watching on TV, thanks for joining us. Please tell your friends and neighbors that we also welcome them to engage with us in any way they'd like. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our town account, Sharon Engstrom. Okay. 
Can everybody hear me? How about now? Much better. Oh, sorry. So up on the, um, the first slide is our budget calendar for the budget season. Um, tonight is listed as our first finance forum. And then on December 4th, 5th, 11th, and 12th, we have a select board, um, select board meetings for budget presentation. Um, on January 3rd, 7th, and 17th, school committee um, will have budget meetings. And on January 31st, um, there's a charter school committee budget to, um, oh, by the charter, the school committee budget has to go to the town manager. On February 28th, the balanced budget um, from the town manager goes to FinCom. And then on February 27th, um, we have the school budget and then going to being presented to FinCom. March 6th, um, town budget's presented to FinCom. And then March 13th, um, the budgets um, will be voted and articles voted. So this first slide um, is the fiscal 18 results for revenues. Um, and we came in very high, $2.2 .2 million over projection. And this is kind of a small, um, maybe hard to read, but. So this actually lists um, the components that created that $2.2 .2 million um, overage above projection. Um, and we, we broke it down to baseline in one time. Baseline being the things that are potentially sustainable and that may be built into the fiscal 19 budget. And we'll talk about that in the comment section. Um, so the first one listed is um, motor vehicle excise. This has been an issue for us every year. No matter how much we increase it, we seem to build money in this area. Motor vehicle excise was up 7% over actuals last year, um, over last year. And so it's 288,000 above projection. And so in the comment section, you'll see that we put fiscal 19 and there's an asterisk in front. And that's um, drawing your attention to the fact that at November town meeting, we'll be adding to that budget line item um, $150,000 um, to kind of get it closer. Um, to what actuals are. And then fiscal 20, we're going to add another 100,000 to what we originally had thought the projection to be. <coughs> so that would be trying to get us a little bit closer to what actuals are in fiscal 19 and then 20. And then property taxes is um, 269,000 over. And that's actually um, a result of less abatements than what we have in our budget. And so that's actually a good sign. It means that we're not needing to abate as much as we budget for. But there's nothing more that can be done because that's part of your levy. It's already budgeted for. Charges for services is broken down into two pieces. Um, I don't know if you recall, but at November town meeting, we had an article to add projects um, to the inspections revolving fund for some of the larger projects so that we'd be able to monitor those projects. Um, and so the 100,000 you see as one time is actually related to overages related to building inspection because a lot of those bigger projects, <coughs> those fees that we're charging will probably no longer hit um, the general fund, the larger projects, the, what's causing our overage really. Um, and so that's a one time thing. Um, so we broke it down to the two pieces. The 120 is potentially sustainable. 80,000 of that is actually our um, increase in the fee for the parking sticker. Um, so that is sustainable. And you see that in fiscal 19, we are increased. We had increased the budget by 50,000. And in fiscal 20, is that 50,000? Yeah. <laughs> I can't read it from here. Yeah. <laughs> 50,000. So the Medicaid reimbursement is another line that's potentially sustainable. The last couple of years, it, it has come in over. Um, and so you see that in, when we built the fiscal 19 budget, we built in an additional 35,000. And then in fiscal 20, another 15. Meals tax um, is over by 60,000. And when we built the budget for fiscal 19, another 10 was built in. Um, and then 20, we are adding another 15. For investment income, that is um, a dual um, line item as well. We used to see a lot of um, 
return on this line item because we don't project for money held for capital projects. We don't we don't budget interest on money that's being held. Like, so when we're doing the library project and we're holding a large sum of money, we don't want this up and down. We want to budget for what we're pretty sure we're going to get. And so capital projects are never included. So that's the piece that's kind of one time. But this year we've seen some very large um, interest rates compared to prior years. So almost doubled the interest rate that we've had in prior years on our, on our interest and investments. And so that is resulting in a $600,000 overage on that line item. So as a result of, of seeing this in fiscal 19, we are going to have, and you notice the asterisk, a November town meeting um, adjustment to investment income. And that will be used as a funding source for the amendments that we make in November town meeting to try and get this closer because this who knows how long the interest rates will be high, but they're definitely trending that way. And again, in fiscal 20, another increase um, to try and get us a little closer because that's a big gap that we've got there. Um, Sharon, what, oh, yeah, so what do we have for investment income? What is that amount in the budget? The, in the budget? Yeah. Um, have it on the next slide. Because I, I just 200, never. 200,000, yeah. yeah. The actual was um, over by 600000 I think it was, the budget was like 188 in fiscal 18, and 19 oh, wow. is 200, and we're increasing it to 300. And so we tripled it. 350, yeah, so um, we're actually increasing it at November town meeting and um, in our projection for fiscal 20, um, because we are seeing much higher interest rates than we have enjoyed in the past. Do you have another question? Right. Yeah. So you'll see it in the next slide. I'm going to clarify more, but the fact that that asterisk is there means that we see a need to make an additional change at November town meeting to what we already have built into the 19 budget. So when we were creating the 19 budget, we had already seen that some of these items were starting to come in high, and we would make adjustment as we build the next year's budget. So that's what you're seeing when you don't see an asterisk. When you see the asterisk, we're seeing a need to make a further adjustment. Um, and so at November town meeting, instead of using free cash, we're going to use these as funding sources and increase the projection in our budget, as opposed to using free cash. Please. Medicaid reimbursement, that through the schools. So, I, I guess I'm wondering, I thought that, that we would see that drop based on sort of what we had heard initially at the transition medal in 2016. So, so we would have been you know, that those funds were unstable, but it looks like we feel, I guess, pretty good. We've got to go and help them. Yeah. This is based on quarterly claims that we prepare and submit. Part of it is state funded. The other piece is the circuit breaker, which that funding we've seen decrease. So this is separate so this from. Is really federal, it's federal, state. It's federal, it's federal through, through the state. The state. <laughs> but it's based on claims and um, surveys that we have to complete. And then the items that are left are all considered one time. Um, miscellaneous, we never budget for miscellaneous because they're kind of random things. I mean, up amongst those, um, creating that 219 is a $50,000 settlement that we receive. So there are things that don't happen every year. Delinquent taxes is also kind of like the property taxes, taxes that are overdue. They were built into our tax levy in the prior year, so there's nothing I can do to adjust the budget there. The turn back for the REC revolving, the REC revolving has um, a statute that says that at the end of the year can only have $10,000 moved to the next year. So it's kind of built to be an infusion to free cash. It's not meant to you know, support the operating budget. The, the money has to be cleared out at the end of the year, and that's that 143000 And it always ends up going to free cash. And it doesn't always highlight, because it's not always as large. but. Um, but we put it here so that you can see the full picture of everything that's kind of contributing to this $2.2 million overage. The loss on tax and elderly abatements is a timing issue. So the state, um, when they gave us our reimbursement, actually for fiscal 17, didn't actually deposit it into our account until July 1st, which makes it fiscal 18. So I actually see two payments coming in from the state in fiscal 18. So that's a timing issue that shouldn't happen typically. 
And the FEMA is a typical one that we see as a one-time. We never know when we're going to get FEMA money. Sometimes they're paying us for a storm that happened two years ago. So when we're building the budget, that's not something that we would ever count on yet. Um, so that's kind of why those are in that column. So we've got about just under $1.3 million is stuff that's sustainable and that has been kind of built into the fiscal 19 budget, but also we are going to show you some ads that, you know, go more detail on what the ads are um, to bring it up even further so that we don't see this kind of regeneration um, necessarily in the future. Sure, sorry. Uh, go back to the, the previous page for one second. On the investment income, mm -hmm. can you help me think about what the rationale is behind the uptick from 19 to 20? And the, and the reason I'm thinking about it is we've got a lot more certainty about the rate environment in 19 than we do in 20. Mm -hmm. um, we know in our current rate environment that even the new, call, call it budget, the new baseline of 320 is going to be below where we're likely to be in FY19. Mm -hmm. So it feels to me like we actually should be, or we should at least consider being more aggressive on the front end and trailing it down in 20, yeah. given the uncertainty in, of the rate oh. environment then. <laughs> Um, you'll see when you get to the end of the meeting and you're voting on more articles, um, we're adjusting income to 300,000 in this year and 450 next year. We just as easily have could have said 400 this year, but we don't need it. So the only reason the town meeting is asked to vote it is because there's an offsetting expense. Um, we just didn't need another 100,000. It's very likely to come in and it'll show up next year. It's regenerated again unless we need it at April Town. So generally speaking, at this point in the year, you don't recognize revenue that you can't spend because mm -hmm. it's just no point. This is a balance budget. Now, the revenue that you have to recognize um, is things like new growth. But for local receipts, which this is, there's just no point unless you're going to spend it. Okay. So these are the um, projected changes for November town meeting for the fiscal 19 revenues. So as we spoke of, mo motor vehicle excise tax was a concern actual figure was 3.98 million and our budget for fiscal 19 was 3.8 so for fiscal 19 at november town meeting we're increasing by a hundred thousand dollars and as i said using it as a funding source for some of the expenses that we're adding at november town meeting and we're also proposing um, changing our fiscal 20 projection to four million so increasing it another hundred thousand Another item that we have every year is that we tend to budget our new growth conservatively. So for fiscal 19, um, new growth was at 550,000. We've built this budget. And now that we've gotten to this time of year, DOR has certified our new growth number at just under 840,000. And so we have an additional $289,664 to spend. So we will increase our projection for revenue, and that will be used as a funding source for some of the changes that we're making, just like above. And then again, as we spoke of interest earnings, you see that the actual came in at 786,000, and our fiscal 19 budget is only 200,000. So it's plenty of room to put the 300, make it 300. But like Bob said, we have a balanced budget. If we don't have a spending, we can't increase the revenue. So we increased it by 100,000, and then we're proposing a change in fiscal 20 to 450. So for expenditures, um, we have um, the expenses coming in 1.88 million under budget. And these are um, the biggest um, pieces of it. 1.4 million dollars is coming from the area of accommodating costs. Um, employee benefits is at 353 over budget. And when we build the budget, employee benefits is one of those areas, especially for health insurance, that we don't know the rates, we don't know the enrollment. And so we do tend to use a, a, a pretty good size percentage to get to that number. Um, so it's not uncommon to see that um, be an area of regeneration. Um, capital projects is coming in 242 um, under budget. And 150,000 of that is the money that we assigned to the um, Permanent Building Committee, and that's just being turned back. And then you can see DPW equipment, 55,000, and fire, um, 28,000. There's a note down below that kind of mentions to you that capital and FinCarm um, do have some, are designed to have surplus. So capital, we've seen in the past, if we don't um, ask for enough for a capital project, sometimes we'll put it out to bid and then we can't do it because we don't have enough money. So there sometimes is a little extra built into the capital projects we're doing so that we can do them, but there's not that restriction on us where we've asked for not enough money. So there is often capital project money turned back for that reason. 
FinCom reserves is the same sort of thing. That's money that we come to you if we have something that we weren't anticipating, and hopefully we don't, and then we turn it back. So those are kind of built in. And then street lighting and rubbish, 97,000. Highway gas, 95,000. And then miscellaneous, so we had vet veterans aid, debt, um, and vocational schools and state assessments under by 135,000. So the bulk of it is coming from the arena of um, our accommodated costs. And then the town salaries is under by 443,000. Um, at April town meeting, we did ask for public safety overtime. I want to say it was close to 200,000, if I remember correctly. And we tend to ha ask for maybe uh, a little more than we need. And, and there's 127,000 of overtime that's being turned back between police and fire. And I, I believe that to be um, the overtime that was unneeded. 210 is vacant positions from DPW primarily um, and in the area of health. We have some in health. And then vacant positions in economic development, building inspections. So we, we really we struggle um, with the positions being open for a period of time and their savings to the budget. It's not that these positions weren't needed, but it takes time to hire and they remain vacant sometimes. And sometimes you think you have your candidate and then they don't <laughs> accept the job. And then there's various town expenses that under by 133,000. And then the school area, 229,000 being turned back. The largest being um, salaries, probably much like the town side, you know, for positions turning over and, and going vacant for a period of time. 20,000 in the sped area, and then school other at 63,000. This is a five-year analysis of free cash. Free cash is not certified, but by my calculation, it will come in just under $11 million, and this is how it's calculated. So you take your free cash from the beginning of the year, and then the regeneration coming from the revenue, and then the regeneration coming from the expenses, and then we obviously back out any use of free cash since it's been certified, and then there's adjustments, and the adjustments are prior year activity that's being turned back, and then if we have a deficit in a fund, after September 30th, if we didn't get the money, we have to deduct it, so there's sometimes deductions. So that's how it's calculated. I mean, you can see that um, this is a very big year for regeneration compared to other years, especially on the revenue side. But it's also a very low year for the use of free cash if you look at what we've used in prior years. And we did have a dip in free cash in fiscal 17 because we, we had to use so much. That was actually the year we used 2.2 million for the TLT settlement. This kind of boosts us back up in line with where we would have probably been if that didn't happen. <laughs> this is a 15-year look showing you the growth of free cash in the 15 years. Um, and, and most years we're growing free cash. I think there's only a couple of years there. I think it's in fiscal 10 and fiscal 17, but we've been on the rise um, for years. And we also project out um, 19 and 20, and those projections are done with a very conservative $1.5 million of regeneration, as we can see, is very conservative, very attainable for us. And then the use of free cash that we've already um, built into our budget for fiscal 19 of 1.2 in fiscal 19, and then in fiscal 20, just $1 million. So just if that were to come to play, just we'd be still steady climb. Just to look at our reserves position, um, obviously we are not certified, but the calculation is usually very close to DOR. Sometimes they'll pick up on something I missed and deduct it. You know, so it's going to be in this arena, I would hope. Um, and because we're not using free cash at um, November town meeting last year, because we didn't use it, but because they don't have as much staff as they once did, sometimes it's kind of put to the side because they're trying to do people's free cash certification and also their tax rate setting process. So. Last year, even though we got it in in October, it didn't get certified till January because they asked us, do you need it for November town meeting? Well, I said no, <coughs> I'll push to the side. So I'm not sure when it will be certified, but I'm pretty confident the numbers will be like what you've seen here. So when you add all of the reserves that we have, the free cash that we have calculated uncertified, and the stabilization funds and the FinCom reserves, we have $12.76 million in reserves, which is 12.7% of our fiscal 19 revenues, which is in excess of your minimum policy of 7%.
and also kind of puts us in a good space for our bond rating agencies because it seems like they really like to see 10% plus. So we're in a good spot in that regard. On to Bob. <laughs> Sharon has hit on um, some of the things that I'll just quickly highlight. You can see property taxes uh, impacted by both the override and the new growth, which you just mentioned, is up almost 10%. Um, the new growth was, was, was from some of the economic development. Um, that's also, as you'll see, um, allowed us to improve uh, estimates for future new growth. Um, the rest of revenues are growing, obviously, at a much slower pace. One thing Sharon didn't mention is we have to adjust a town meeting our state aid to be 120,000, less than the 2.5% we had hoped for. You can see it was only 1.7%, um, which is continuing a long stretch of even sub 2.5% figures. To just look out a couple of years, um, our revenues are now growing or seem to be growing around 3%. You can see that 20 and 21 figures are just a little over 3%. The discussion that FinCom and the room will have shortly is how much free cash to use in the 20 budget. Based on the last meeting we had, I know FinCom is pretty comfortable with a million, so that's what I've shown. And uh, you can see that with that use of free cash, even though it's a little lower, you're still talking about about a 3% increase in revenues. I'll spend some time talking about some of the accommodated costs and some of the turnbacks you saw, the million and change. Uh, definitely influence our future forecast for accommodated costs. So you can see, first of all, and I'll get into the details on benefits and health insurance, but our accommodated costs are growing now at the same rate as our revenues, which is not typical in the past. Um, typically, we were saying accommodated cost forecasts of at least 5 and 6% for the revenues that are free or maybe a little bit less. Um, so this is good news. That gap um, you know, may not exist for a couple of years. Um, I don't think there's anything there uh, that needs a lot of explaining other than if you go to the bottom. Um, from a discussion yesterday, we've actually combined uh, two things into a community priority that I'll get to shortly. To look a little more closely at benefits, because that's really our single largest expense now at almost $20 million. Uh, the Retirement Board has pegged our increase annually to be 5.3% for the foreseeable future. Um, every two years, they do a, an actuarial study, so that is subject to change. Uh, Sharon told me last night that the uh, growth in the stock market, at least until today, was so strong that um, we may be approaching 80% funding, which is not a number I thought I'd see uh, anytime soon. And of course, it went back down today. Um, let's see, the other big change, which you saw in a prior slide, was um, unemployment turned back a lot of funds last year, and obviously, we don't need them this year. That was a uh, hedge against the override failing when we would have had to have uh, layoffs and uh, have unemployment costs. Um, the startling number you'll see is we're projecting health insurance for next year to be 0%. And we're not really, we're still assuming 7.5%, but as I've mentioned, um, we're collectively bargaining this with all of the unions and the school, the town, the light department. <coughs> Um, so I can't go into too much detail other than I'm very comfortable with that forecast for next year that does accommodate a 7.5% increase in premiums. So the actual run rate right now is lower. Um, Medicare and Social Security, not much of a change. That's an area we had added some funds to from the override to hedge against new employees. And police and fire, we typically you know, bring up 100,000 or 10,000 every year. So the benefit cost of only an increase of 1.4% is spectacular by historical standards. To look more closely at health insurance, um, there you see uh, to build the FY20 budget, I have increased premiums by 7.5%. Um, we have an opt-out program. Um, we pay employees to opt out by paying farmers not to farm. It's actually been spectacular. We've, um, we give the employees about 25% of the savings, and the town keeps about 75% of the savings. So it's worked out well for us, and not so well for the spouses, uh, companies that these people are working at, I'm sure. You can see there's not a lot of other expenses in this area, and this leads to the flat projection. Um, we are proposing to move 55,000 out of the health insurance budget 
for November town meeting action. Um, just like the interest uh, income, we could take significantly more than that if we needed it to spend. There's at least another couple hundred thousand in there. But I, I will caution that it's a little early in the fiscal year. I've only seen two in, a, in our estimate of the third month. We did make some significant uh, plan design changes, especially for our retirees. That's still working its way through the system. So I'm a little cautious on saying how much we've saved, other than I know it's a good number. Bob, excuse me for one sec. Why the uh, opt-out coming down so far in 20? You just you think um, less people will opt-out? That's got two pieces, actually. I probably should have labeled it differently. Um, and one of them's under negotiation, so I just want to say it's a pool of money in case we go to a higher deductible plan. So it's not just the opt-out, it's also that piece. Got it. Um, put all this together, and, and what does it spell? Um, well, if you... Revenues are going up 3% and your accommodated costs are going up 3%, then you can probably imagine so are your operating budgets. And that's approximately right. In FY20, if, if we do choose to use a million dollars in free cash and everything else is as projected, the operating budgets will be going up 3 and a quarter percent. Um, again, by historic standards, that's a pretty good figure. But I will say that 3.5 to 4 was not uncommon five years or more ago. So uh, three and a quarter is by no means a historically good number. Um, I think the main point to make here is the override was a tremendous relief. It's allowed us to add staff in the town and the schools. It was not meant to repeal Prop 2 and a half and cause us to suddenly get more revenue every year that we need to run the organizations. You can see in FY21 and 22, similar idea. If you use a million in free cash, you're talking about approximate 3% operating budgets. So it's a solid number. It's better than zero. It's better than one and a half. But three, three and a quarter is, is, is not a lot of access there. Um, just to answer a question in advance, should it come up? Um, a million dollars of free cash is assumed here. Every hundred thousand you add or subtract changes the operating budgets by 0.15%. Should you want to get into that discussion? I want to spend um, some time now talking about capital because I think capital is a big part of our discussion for this um, FY20 budget uh, as we go into uh, November town meeting and April town meeting. There's, um, there's five areas I want to hit on. Um, the select board has seen a similar memo. FinCom has seen a similar memo. Uh, building security is the first issue, and we talked about this last week at the select board's meeting with our representatives. It's about four and four and a half million dollars scoped out of work. Uh, some of you have participated in an executive session about a year ago and know a little bit more uh, than I'm going to say tonight. At November town meeting, we want to redirect half a million that's in the current year's budget. We were going to um, move or renovate the dispatch center. Uh, we've learned that to renovate the current dispatch center and to keep dispatch operating, is it is incredibly challenging. We had hoped to move into a different space in the building, but that's just not going to work. So if we're going to need to renovate them where they are, they need to be somewhere. So whether we put a trailer in a parking lot or move to North Reading, we don't know yet. Um, but the whole project needs a little more step-back design uh, study for this. As was mentioned last week by Senator Lewis, um, four million, the remaining four million of the building security was placed in a bond bill. Um, I think that's also a reason for us to work on the half million dollars um, of the project design money sooner than we might have otherwise. Effectively, a half million is coming out of the four million and going into design, and a half million is coming out of moving the dispatch center and going back into the four million. So it's, it's sort of a swap. Um, I was a little surprised to hear um, Representative Dwyer uh, at the last meeting say that he didn't think being shovel ready would really have much of an impact on this project, but um, there's no harm in being prepared. Um, what we don't know, and um, Representative Jones actually was going to come and he told me late in the day he couldn't make it, we have no idea how to access this four million and when it might be accessible. It's up to the governor to release it. It's then up to the fiscal climate in the state budget as to when it's going to be released and our political um, opportunity to get at the $4 million before anyone else does. Um, what we did learn last week, to my surprise, is this is not part of the $72 million 
FY18 state surplus directed at school building security. Dr. Doherty knows a great deal about that. We were both hoping that a portion of this, or even all of it, was part of the 72, because that is cash in the wallet that will be spent. This is just a future promise that maybe someday we'll get this. And just to give you some background, not to be too discouraging about it, um, the average waiting time for reading for these things has been 10 years historically. Um, downtown number one renovation, right in front of Town Hall, and then West Street's a little different, but it's not too different for 10 year waits. So what we'd like to do in the next year is clarify our access to this four million, and if it's 10 years away, we'll need to make a decision, and I would recommend moving on and paying for it ourselves. The second big area is elementary school space and an enrollment study. Um, many people in this room are familiar with the topic. We are asking town meeting in November to redirect uh, approximately 230,000 from the permanent building committee to the school committee or to the facilities department. Last April, when the override passed, there was a little over 200,000, 207,500 exactly that um, we moved into the permanent building committee's line specifically for elementary school space. Uh, the discussion with the permanent building committee since has had them decide they didn't want the money. They wanted a sponsoring agency such as the school committee to come to them to design the project and then they would take over. So this is somewhat of a cosmetic change moving it from the permanent building committee to a, to a different line in the capital plan for the exact same purpose. Uh, the number's a little higher because there's been 20,000 of savings for some other school capital projects. So there is no timeline for this. There is no scope for the cost of the project. Um, and that's the purpose for doing uh, this preliminary work is to develop both of those. Um, certainly, I think it's all of our expectations, whatever the solutions are, that this is not affordable within the levy. This will have to go to voters as a debt exclusion, most likely. Third area, community center. Um, Human Health Services did a nice master plan once say a year, maybe even a year or half ago. Um, the current senior center is too small, um, or we have too many seniors, take your pick. Um, if you're going to expand it to include other things, such as youth or other parts of the community, we, we have not scoped that out. So we know what we need for an elder human services center. We don't know if we want to combine it with other purposes. Um, because of the fact we don't know, we don't have a location Okay, we have a couple of uh, actually in, in the works, an active discussion. Existing buildings where we might uh, you know, be able to acquire the property. Uh, and it's very, very informal so far. Or selectmen have on their goals uh, to figure out what to do with open road. So open road across the street is at least a possibility for a talking point for a community center. Um, because there's both the location and the scope of the work not known, we don't have a total cost, we don't have a timeline. Um, I could imagine that a solution to this problem costs less than $5 million, which means it could be handled inside the levy. Uh, if it is more than $5 million, FinCom's policy is it is not inside the levy. It will be done as a debt exclusion. So that's a to-be to be dis discovered portion. <coughs> There's a clump of things put together here, you'll see, that's recreation slash athletic repairs and needs. Um, Except for that last item, which is still uncertain, the rec committee is still looking at changes to Birch Meadow with a very rough estimate of something less than a million dollars. The rest we know. We have quotes. We have updated quotes within the last month. We know the scope of work. We're ready to go. We just don't have the money. Um, there is 8.4 million of work identified. You can see two and a half million, and this is in, I would say, priority order. Two and a half million is turf tube repairs and expansion of the field and lighting. That's all turf two. A million four for, for, for lighting the remaining four fields at Birch Meadow. Uh, town meeting had pro previously authorized a million dollars of debt. We spent 100,000 to scope the project out. We still have a $900,000 authorization. It would need to be increased to do the scope of the work, and that's why the project was stopped. There's $3 million needed for replacing the high school stadium turf and repair and replace the track. And in addition, there's a ropes course um, on the back hill near turf too that needs some work, about $100,000. A million five will take care of the high school field house floors and bleachers. And it should be noted that those were not done as part of the high school renovation. 
um, 15 or 20 years ago, whenever it was. And then, as I said, the rest is unknown. So, so th those projects are ready to go if the funding was available. And you'll see that some of them can be done inside the levy. Uh, lastly, the DPW garage. Um, we have done a scope analysis. We know what we need. We know how much equipment there is, how much is projected, how much space it takes, how much staff we have. We've done both that for Reading and Wakefield. We know what we need. Uh, Linfield has a recent interest in this idea. And since Linfield's wallet is bigger than Wakefield's in Reading, we welcome them with open arms. <laughs> and we told them that's the reason. So we don't know if uh, a three uh, community regional DPW garage is possible. Um, but them adding in has added kind of an interesting dimension to the discussion. Um, on the other side, we don't have a location. Camp Curtis has been discussed. Um, honestly, the military leaders change so often at Camp Curtis, it's hard to have a continuing discussion. We've um, had everything from um, very warm, absolutely, you can build it right over there, to, you know, please leave right now. And um, ultimately, this is a governor's decision, but obviously the governor is going to listen to the military. Um, I will say from past discussions that um, the generals in Virginia are very, very supportive of this idea. They have been told to do something similar to community policing with the military. To, to, to do a joint venture with three municipalities, let alone one, would be the only time it's ever been done in this country. And it's something that they are very excited to do. But translating their interest and that excitement into a project is still going to take some discussion, um, both with our regional partners and at the local level. Um, the important thing for Reading is if we were to move the garage from its current location to somewhere else, it would open up um, some very significant economic development opportunities. Um, I scoped that out as part of an economic development project a couple of years ago, and I see no problem um, creating two to two and a half million dollars of property tax revenue down there uh, in the market as of two years ago. So there'll be a cost for this for sure. There'll also be you know, economic benefit. I have no idea how this project would be financed. It's um, something to be discussed. So it's not immediate. So I think it's important for the community to sort of see that picture of um, five big projects with various states of red. To continue to summarize this, again, the override provided an additional 5% of capital. In the first year, the current year we're in, again, we've planned that since April to be elementary school space prep work. Um, we have room to hit our highest priority in FY20, the building security $4 million project, if we wish. We can fund that with debt and do it inside the levy. And in FY21, we can hit some of those high, the highest priorities of the athletic recreation. Again, with debt. And just as a footnote, um, a year ago, we had put 400000 into the general fund and three enterprise funds total to scope out work with Downtown Improvements 1, primarily Haven Street. Um, that work is still ongoing. We had anticipated we might be ready for FY20, but that's not going to happen, even though it's several months away. So we're going to plan that out to FY21. Um, I don't imagine the public interest in stuff going on, on underground would be too high, so we'll probably do that at the staff level and maybe at a board meeting once in a while. Um, but for anything going on above ground, it's going to require, I think, extensive public dialogue. Um, there had been discussions um, several years ago about spending six or eight hundred thousand on in that area to do all kinds of streetscape improvements on Haven Street, to even do a round of what's a roundabout now at the end by the train station. Um, and so, whatever happens, we'll have to uh, have a lot of public participation. Paul. I just, I just had a question when you were talking about the um, public works garage and yep. the scope of the buildings complete. Are you integrating the cemetery garage? Yeah. Uh, okay, so complete with the cemetery garage. Correct. That work's done. Yep. Okay, thanks. To be more specific as to exactly what we're doing for FY19, we'll get into FY20 shortly. Um, we're looking to add in November $143,000 of capital expenses. Um, I want to be a little careful <coughs> with the first one, but I'll say we had a security issue at the DPW garage just over a week ago, the result of which was some asbestos was left in the yard by party or parties unknown. Um, asbestos in an area with both staff and residents, even kids, could be uh, 
exposed to was a very dangerous, very serious thing. We had to call professional licensed professionals to remove it, and they have. Um, we quickly put together within a week a plan to improve the DPW garage security, knowing that we're going to be there for at least a few more years, no matter what happens. So that's the first request. Uh, facilities then need to, to replace a truck that had been scheduled for a few years but cannot wait. And DPW put in some tongue twisters to see if I knew what they were, so I had to Google them. <laughs> The flail mower is a big arm that mows crooked land. And the sander tub sounds like uh, exactly what it is. So there's a couple of small things um, that add up to 143,000. Um, as I mentioned, some of these swaps then happen. 500,000 uh, that was going to be aimed at dispatch center uh, goes to a more uh, broad design program. And then there's the uh, almost 230,000 going to elementary school space plannings with three different components. What, what, right now, the way I would propose it, and we'll go through our process this winter and discuss this, I would propose that next April the town meeting authorize $4 million in debt for building security, and I would also propose the town meeting authorizes $3 million in debt for turf two. Uh, and the birch metal light fielding, which is the priority in recreation and athletic um, needs. And just as a reminder, there's already 900,000 authorized for that last one, so that'd be a $3.9 million project. And again, both of those can be afforded with inside, inside the levy, starting in FY20 for the first and FY21 for the second. Um, the reason that I would want to ask for both to be authorized by town meeting next April is if we find a reason why we don't want to rush out into the building security because there might be state money, then we have the opportunity in the budget to swap and do the athletic recreation item first. That's actually a little smaller um, and can be tucked in, it can be swapped in either order. And when we first put this capital plan together, um, probably ending in late August, um, over the last, what is now three weeks, there's been a significant deterioration of turf too. Um, it's um, been shut down at least a couple of times. And if the hurricane comes this weekend, that'll be a third time. Mm -hmm. It has to be uh, tarpaulin. Um, water has seeped in and gotten rid of some of the infill underneath. Um, I walked on it with uh, two of the three uh, fellow, uh, folks to my right, with Joe Huggins. And it was 140 degrees on the turf one day. And I felt like I was walking on rocks. There's almost no turf left on turf too. I'm not an expert, it sure looks dangerous to me. When uh, improvements are made to it, you can see the new turf, the old turf looks like this, the new turf looks like that. It's visible from the outside of the turf. So, um, in talking to Tom Zaya, um, I think it's safe to use for certainly another year, possibly another two years, but no way is it going to last more than two years. It's going to be shut down. So, if there is an opportunity to swap it, building security is more important. But if there's a reason we might be able to get someone else's money to do that, that's that's why I think both should be authorized. Yeah. yeah just on that topic, I'm not disagreeing with anything you said, and I know you can probably imagine where I'm going with this, but having spent a lot of time on turf two over the last well, three months with football, there's no way that thing's gonna last <laughs> till till the, the timing up there, right? Yeah. I mean it, it's I, I think you appreciate and understand it, so I, I won't go over it too much, but hopefully there's a way we can, we can find to, to prioritize things differently because that is, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm truly worried about people playing on that field. Yeah, I'm, I'm told that the best way to scope out a project is to begin work late fall, early winter in order to be able to do a repair in the summer. So you got to bid it out, you got to scope it out, you got to put an RFP out on the street, you got to bid it out. Um, waiting until April to do any of that will not mean this is going to be done next summer, even if we want to do it in FY20. So the question will be, as we go through the budget process <coughs> tonight, if this is something that rises a little higher in priority because of its condition over the last month, especially, um, you know, we may want to start doing some uh, background work this winter. Um, we really haven't talked about that much because, again, in, in my opinion, at least, Turk 2, uh, went from a uh, you know 
two-year issue to an urgent issue within the last month. Is, is all the discussion on repairing it versus no, replacing, replacing it? ripping it out. Okay, I yeah, yeah, it's lost it. Yeah. In the repair. <clears throat> no, ripping it out. It, and also increasing the size. If you're in the parking lot looking at turf two, pushing it further down to the left to make it a regulation size field. Can you get rid of the curb and it's in it too? Vanessa? of field lighting is, is fine. Um, and again, I haven't asked since uh, probably last April or so. I don't think that subcommittee's met a lot since then. Um, but they, they, they at one point had thought to move the fields by 15 degrees and then realized they were wasting about a million and a half dollars to do that. Um, you know, I told them wooden bats would, would to solve the problem of balls flying out under Birch Meadow. They didn't like that. So they put up higher and higher nets. Um, but again, the last I heard, those fields are not going to be moved and not going to be changed, so the lights are okay. They're clear to go in as such. The remaining work that I heard about were things <coughs> that are not so much uh, athletic recreation, things like walking paths and trails, uh, perhaps around the perimeter, perhaps up the middle in some way. There's discussion about having some kind of food element in the middle, uh, some kind of shade for parents that are there all day with kids. So it's, it's money that could be honestly parceled in in smaller amounts from what I've heard, but it doesn't impact where the fields will be. So the Berkman Master Plan subcommittee had been meeting more regularly in the last few months. Okay. Uh, and they're looking at it holistically. So I would want that to be reconsidered before this move forward. Because if they do make any changes, then I'm talking about potentially not having fields in that. Well, that, that does not match what the recreation administrator has been telling me, so I guess I'll have to find it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, as Mr. Lee said, we're going to be looking at You just alluded to it, but I do want to make sure we're approaching the youth sports and everything else because I do think there's an opportunity out there and it's the right group that should be helping, particularly maybe holding out some of the lighting or such. I, I think there's a lot of opportunity and I'd like to see us do that sooner than later, especially if we're talking about putting this in. I would really like, oh. Bob did allude to it that we have an opportunity here, but I'd really like to see us aggressively go after asking youth sports and the other organizations to help pitch in because 
they're the benefactors as much as the you know school and the town. So absolutely. No, pitching, pitching with money, cold hard cash. <laughs> Elaine. Well, you gotta keep them in mind they do pay user fees, so they're not using it for nothing. So we're asking for Sorry, what do you mean? Oh, oh, I, I agreed. But it's a capital kind of thing, just like I'm sure they have some money. Yeah. And maybe going forward, too, for those 600 people watching on the RCTV. <laughs> Linda Snow Doxer, uh, Beaver Road. Just a question. When I remember back when we were talking about the lighting program, we went for a lower cost light program because we couldn't touch and I think it was the LEDs that would have lasted longer and be more, been more economically um, favorable for the town, but we couldn't touch that one. When we're talking about the lighting program, which type of light are we talking about? And is it the one that is going to earn the town back money over time? Um, luckily, our facilities director is writing back and can answer that. Yeah. Um, generally, the technology and lighting has changed quite a bit and continues to change. So whatever we said two years ago is not true anymore. And honestly, whatever I might say tonight might change in six months. But Joe, do, do we do LED this time? I think so. For the turf, turf two lights? Yeah. I, the price includes uh, LED, LED upgrade in the price, and it would be a must go system, yeah. which is what we have on some turf, turf one, which is something that's uh, remote access, remote control from anywhere. Just get one. Thank you. Um. Just a point of clarification, when we were looking at whether Turf 2 and the lighting could um, be bumped up as a, a priority, um, that would not be in lieu of building security, correct? Unless the state came forward with the bond money. Well, it could be. Um, one scheduled to start one year and one the next year. Mm -hmm. So you could reverse the order, mm -hmm. hoping for money or changing your mind on priorities. Um, I think what we all don't want to do is go ahead with the $4 million building security project and then get that phone call. Right, of course. And we tried our best last uh, week uh, with the three uh, legislators, and they still haven't fish finished the FY18 budget, is the fairest thing to say. That's right. <laughs> so I just don't want to rush. You know, by next spring, we may have a much better picture of what this really looks like. Hearing that something urgent and something that we can appreciate. It takes facility that, but there's a lot of people in the room who experience it. I know Gail has a lot of people. It's turned out into a state. Many walks across the turf. <laughs> so I just. Sure. I'm just thinking to the extent that there's, there are safety issues with the use of turf too, but I'm sure there are also safety issues with the need right. to invest in building security. So um, I know that that'll be important to think. To, to and since we didn't know, or at least I didn't appreciate the condition of turf too when I was asked last spring, I didn't ask for an earmark. I could have. Mm -hmm. But since we didn't, that door is closed. So we will get no other funds to fix turf too except our own or what we raise in this community. 
building security is, I think we'd all agree, more important in the long run. Um, but there's a chance some of the people's money might help us. Right. So it, it's, it's an impossible equation to solve. Right. Um, are you willing to shut down a, a significant field for a couple of years? Uh, that's really the question, because that is on the horizon now. I didn't think it was last, last spring. What is the dollar amount for the, for the field, um, or for turf two, separate from the lighting and other improvements? Oh, thank you. Sorry. You know, I, I don't know that we have that. Um, I'm sure we could get it. Oh, you, you, just the way you showed it when the handouts was two and a half, two and a half, and then 1.4 for the lighting. Yeah, 1.4 is four fields that aren't turf two like that. Okay. Turf two, the rest, the two and a half million includes lights. Mm -hmm. okay. as, as Elaine pointed out, if you're going to relight turf two, you save a couple hundred thousand by relighting all five fields at once. So it's. And it's kind of a $3.9 million project if you want to do it the right way. It's a question of when. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Barry. So uh, if like, the town decides that building security really should get done, um, whether we have the name or not, if the phone call does come and we want to take it, Marshall, does that sort of get us out of it? They say, well, we're doing it on your own, you don't need it. Um, that, that's like what, what do you think? Clarify. Yeah. I, I would too. So I mean, I don't know that there's any rules. Uh, so so not there's no rules right now. Not, not there's no rules right now. Yeah, there's just no rules right now. So I think you run the risk of losing the money, but I can't tell you you will lose the money. So but you also said it takes ten years. Absolutely. So. Um, that, that's why I think we'll be at a much better position. When FY18 is closed, all the excess billion dollars is allocated, whoever it is. The FY19 revenues, which are running good for the state, are sort of assessed. They'll put together a meeting like this, more people in the audience maybe, and they'll start talking about these things. Um, we have three good le legislators, at least through January, we, have, we know. Um, we'll get the best crack we can on money that's available. Um, I would say it's it's a very remote possibility that we will have access to the four million in time for the budget next April. So, just to share a So, the four million dollars, you know, I can imagine that's not going to get what's in that ball wants to do. It's either going to spread over a couple of years. Yeah. So, is it possible for us to sort of prioritize the most important building security stuff but still have our own to the turf? And we run the risk maybe we lose half. This is this is where it gets a little tricky. If you ask town meeting for authorization, then you know the folks mostly up at this table and a few others can decide what to do. If you don't have the authorization, you can't do anything. If authorization is granted for four million dollars, yes, we can spend it piecemeal. But we'd also have to know not to borrow it all up front. We'd only borrow a million dollars and do this for it. But this might be a little obvious, and I mean this genuinely. We can't fix one school first, and then the other schools next. We have to do things to all schools about equally. Um, it, because of that, we found it very hard to divide up the work. Um, we can divide it up into, as I recall, a two and a half million dollar piece and a one and a half million dollar piece very easily. To divide it up a little finer than two and a half, I'm sure we can do, but I'm sure it takes a little work. But you're absolutely right that that four million is much more divisible um, than the turf issue is. That's you can do what you do. <coughs> Bob, you, you're, you mentioned that it could be 10 years, but it could also be never, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that it's totally within the discretion of the governor right. to decide whether to read. It sounds like our legislators are committed to, to advocating for it, but at the and end they, of the day. And they said the topic is the top priority of everyone in Beacon Hill, is school building security especially. You know, municipal employees, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. That's probably but right. it is, It's the highest priority they have in terms of bond bills. So that's why I'm not as pessimistic as the tenure or the never. Um, honestly, I, I think I would hope that we'd see it in a couple of years, but you're right, we don't know. 
Oh, thanks. Sorry, one more question just back on turf too. And, and really, it's the same thing for the stadium turf as well. What is the process and who, who is ultimately in charge of determining when we can no longer use those? And, and really, the, the reason I'm, I'm curious is, you know, it's twofold. At some point, we're going to run into, like your comment, right, of just having to shut these down. And, you know, that's going to have uh, a significant ripple impact on youth sports, on the school sports, on everything. At a certain yes, point, too, well, not school, and it's not something I know very well, but we run the risk that these fields yeah. are not in good shape when someone gets hurt on those fields and comes back after the town. There goes the money that we were hoping to spend on fixing them. So, so to answer, it's already been shut down twice in the last right. month. Yep. And so we take the information that we have available, we consult with facilities, and we make a decision. So we're, we're reaching that point. Yes. yes. So it's a, it's, a, it's a school department decision. Right. But the stadium field's coming quickly behind, right, and not to hammer a point, but it's not five years from now. And so we're going to be stuck without access to two fields. Mr. Owens. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get down into the weeds, but uh, very nice. You know. <laughs> no pun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's, I, and I'm sure this has all been done, uh, but just trying to get a sense, like, I mean, it, you know, I, I agree with Ann that, you know, building security is, you know, uh, should be our priority. Uh, and have we looked at, uh, you know, if we had to prioritize those two things, I like Barry's idea to somehow find a way that they're on a parallel track, but we can't do that. And we reached out to Austin Prep and these types of places where we can uh, you know, rent their fields for a year or something for for games. So and and the other thing you and I talked about Bob was you know maybe bringing uh, I know that some of the youth programs bring those portable lights in for uh, for was it Saturday night lights or something yeah. maybe down there. Yeah, Saturday night. And I don't think that's a lot of money. Obviously, you'd have to have the neighbors uh, weigh in on that, but you could open up Parker uh, to be used other than during daylight hours for, for, for a specified period of time. Those are all ways to maybe, if we do have to prioritize one over the other, uh, we'll have some backup for the field use, whether it be Austin or Yeah, it's Again, I don't want to get down to the weeds, but. Yeah, when I say that one has to come first, I really mean from a planning standpoint, we can afford the debt service for one whole project one year earlier. It doesn't mean you can't approach both and figure out the way to finance it so that you can fit them both in. Um, there's more room in the second year and thereafter for payments. Maybe you take 400000 out of free cash the first year that you otherwise don't have or would have to knock to a castle thing like a fire truck. So there's ways to do two at once, absolutely. But from a planning standpoint, they easily fall one after the other. And Austin Prep's a good idea. I have no idea what their use of that field is. I imagine it's less than ours. Yeah. Mr. Doctor. Um, I like the idea of priorities. And so I guess I wanted to ask a little bit more about elementary school space enrollment study because I understand Killam is going to be outside of the levy and I think that's a priority so I kind of would like to know a little bit about what this is for the capital plan and where's Killam in all of this because that seems to we keep pushing that out. <laughs> So they're, they're one and the same, um, if, without getting too specific. So the whole idea is to get as much information as possible about the five elementary schools, which includes an enrollment study, which we have not done in several years, so that we have a true understanding of what are the space needs. And it isn't necessarily driven by enrollment, it's programmatic. Most of our space needs are programmatic, not enrollment driven, because our enrollment has stayed pretty consistent. Once we have that information, how does K-12 
Killam fit into the picture. We know something is going to be done with Killam, but we want to get the information necessary before we do anything or propose anything with Killam. So Killam is part of, of this uh, planning study. summer and we better hurry up and get going if that's the plan. Yeah. We'd have to do something in November town meeting. Yeah, we'd have to propose something other than what's proposed tonight at November town meeting, which is plenty of time. We can do it on the floor at town meeting. But there's going to have to be money allocated at November town meeting. Honestly, I would ask for the data authorization then to do the whole project. And we'd especially got to get going on the turf part um, this winter in terms of design, put it on an RFP and on you go. Um, if we don't do that, no, there is no chance to do work next summer. It's just not possible. Yeah, Bob, when you say the whole project, can you be more specific? Um, again, I'm assuming they're they're married with the lighting, the 3.9 million. 3.9. Um, I, I think it's dangerous to separate them from a, for a lot of reasons, but it's a community decision. So, round numbers, it's about. Nine hundred thirty-six thousand dollars first year, but it's it's three point nine million in total. I'm, just, I'm looking at uh, page eleven, capital plan, the, the debt side, the debt service schedule. Sorry, eleven of uh, eleven of the numbers. Yes, that's correct. And that's that's if we borrow just for five years, which is pretty aggressive. Right. Um, which is what I tend to like to do. But if you're really boxed in and you have an urgent situation and you really have to do two things and you'd rather do one, then you just straight string um, string it out over a longer amount of time and cut the price almost in half. So for just a million dollars in other sources, conceivably that could be brought in. And again, if, if yeah. this, this thing is, is going to go forward um, for work this summer, then uh, tomorrow morning the fundraising needs to start. Period. Start right, tonight. Please. Um, it's both. So the the smaller amount of it the, of the total is about fifteen to twenty thousand will be for the enrollment study. We've not had an enrollment study since two thousand one. Two thousand one. There was a smaller study. Right, but that wasn't a, that wasn't in a full enrollment study. What, what, what was done? The locker report. It took existing data, but it wasn't a full enrollment study.
And just from my perspective, your call earlier in the evening, we were talking about excise taxes going up. That's because there's a lot more people that live in Red. We have two or 3,000 more in population right now with more housing being built, some more cars. Guess what? There's going to be more kids when the enrollment study is done. It hasn't changed for 10 years. I can't imagine in the next 10 years that that's going to not change, unless families just have a lot less kids going forward. But my neighborhood would cause you to want a sixth elementary school, to an example. So I think the enrollment study um, you know, could yield you interesting results. Mr. Brown. Ms. Doctor. I, I just wanted to let you know, I'm a little confused because I thought you paid for a whole community study not so long ago, what, in the last five years, that showed our elementary school um, ages were decreasing, our, our elderly was increasing, and over a 20-year period, our mm -hmm. school age was going to be flat. So that was a study that I thought came from so I'm confused about all the studies and different um, MAPC did an area study, um, and that was three to five years ago. Right. And it said what you said, but that's not a Reading specific thing. We then did a human elder services specific study for Reading. The schools are trying to do the specific piece for the for this town of Reading. Ms. Ben. Because of kids, not 
but I, I fear we just hit, hit the taxpayers up for an override. Uh, yes, it passed, but there were a lot of people who didn't vote for it. Um, and, and it's my worry that if we go back the, the next year or the following year for debt exclusion, we, we might not get it. Yes. Right. The school security part. Nope. It's all under the levy. As long as security is under the levy, uh, turf two and all the field lighting is under the levy. Everything else is really not priced out, and so we don't know uh, whether we can tuck it under the levy. Some of the recreation things, possibly one by one. Um, elementary school space, I seriously doubt it. DPW, I seriously doubt it. Community center, it really depends what that looks like. Right. The rest is possible. The studies. Yeah. The, and just to be clear, studies under, under the levy. Just, just to be clear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Studies under the levy. Not the result of the study. <laughs> I'm sorry. This year, I heard uh, Bob, just to be clear, they'd only be under the levy if we staggered them. We couldn't, we couldn't do them both in one year under the levy. Well, if we borrow for 10 years instead of five, we can do them. Okay, fair. Um, just what, a point of clarification on what Ms. Binder was talking about. So the, the three million that you've proposed on, uh, is it this slide or is it the next slide? Um, yeah, so the, no, it's not this one. It's maybe one slide later. I, I lost it anyway. There's three million in there, which was two and a half for turf two, the additional half million in it. Yes, this one. Um, that three million is two and a half for turf to five hundred thousand of it is is the additional debt authorization we'd need for the field lighting in addition to the nine hundred k. Correct. So it's um, not the cost; it's the authorization. Right. And, and what I heard you say was the justification for doing that, for lumping it in, is that there's savings in doing all all the fields at the same time. Do we have any any idea of the scope of those savings? Just turf two, the turf two and the lighting together, because the lighting's on turf two or around. And, and more. No, the, the three million authorization um, would, would get you all the field lighting yeah. and turf two, and the total authorization would then be three point nine million because point nine already exists. Right. But just just to be clear, let's just go back here. There's the cost: two point five, one point four. Let's forget what's authorized. You have to be able to afford to do 3.9 million if you're going to pair those ideas together. So, so what I heard you say, and this is, and I, I think I generally agree with Ms. Binda, with the exception that if the savings are substantial in terms of doing all the lighting at the same time, you know that that would resonate with me. Do we have any sense for what those savings would be doing the fields at the same time versus one um, and then four? I can only say what we looked at before. Um, let me try to remember. It's about a hundred thousand dollars a field of savings. So let's say it's not quite 500,000 by bumping five together, but it's 250. That's probably pretty reasonable to get labor out there to do a project is a big cost. Whether they do two or five fields is much less of a cost. And, and certainly, I would, I would have a hard time imagining that you can redesign turf two without including at least the lights for that. Yeah, I think, I mean, the alternative would be you do turf two plus the lights for turf two and the other fields at a later date. That's what I was getting at. What's the savings of doing it? It's, it's got to be a couple hundred go. thousand dollars at a minimum based on past experience. Linda? Yeah. I just wanted to address um, Linda's um, concern about kicking Kilom down the road. The goal for doing the study is actually not to kick it down the road, but to make sure that when we do we have a plan that will answer all of the district's needs. So if there are changes that need to be made, we'll know that from the study that's done, rather than throwing money at a problem that's really too blind for the scope. So it's not really ignoring the and pushing it down the road. It's just trying to figure out what we need to do and how the whole fits into that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the notion of doing these capital projects um, obviously, we can still figure out the priority and the scope and the cost. Um, you know, while we, some of us may agree the side of relief that we can even get these things done without having to go back and ask the voters to weigh in on it um, as, a, as a dead exclusion, 
Um, if we do it under the levy, it's really important to understand that there are opportunity costs because if we use those funds for these projects, it means that other things won't get done. So it's really important, I think, if we're going to do this, and, and, and obviously everybody, no, no one here said these things aren't necessary, but also as part of the equation, if we're going to do 3.9 in some aspect of, of uh, the buildings we do, we have to just, we have, we have to have on the other, the other column things that are going to get pushed down, whether it be a fire truck, whether it be something down the road, because I think that that's really the key decision point. It's not just whether or not we ask the voters or whether we do it under the levy, but what are we doing and then when we're not doing it and what are we doing later. Because I think that needs to be part of the place. Well, FinCom has a full capital plan um, in front of them. Um, you, you can take my word that the things we're talking about tonight were done after all the essential capital was already planned. So fire trucks, DPW, facilities needs are all in the capital plan. And it's a balanced capital plan actually for the next seven years. Then we saw what excesses are left, and that's when this discussion happened. Now things happen, things break, you have to do something sooner, that could happen. But particularly for our fire department, we have a very rigorous plan of five or 10 or 20 year replacement, depending on what you're talking about. We have not changed that even during tough times. So just to close the loop, Mr. Chair, on one other thing. So Bob, would you say that us being really, really disciplined, putting a certain percentage of our budget um, by you know, right off the top into capital, that we're now being able to get, we're getting the dividends of that conservative budget down the road? You've, you've been getting the dividends of that for many years in the operating budget with performance contracting, with um, saving 50 to 100,000 in DPW equipment repairs. So yes, this discipline approach has paid many, many dividends. Some of them are hard to see. Mr. Chair, I might suggest, it sounds like um, as part of, I'm going to suggest it as a FinCom review. I suspect the Board of Selectmen would like to see the same thing also. That we ought to um, see if we can understand what the impact would be of two flavors. Flavor number one would be turf two with just its lights. And flavor number two would be the broader um, all lights. We can see the savings, costs, impacts. You won't lose all the savings because you do one and then all the others together conceivably. So it's really only going to be the impact of one of them. But maybe that would be something that we could take a look at, understand, compare in terms of priorities, as Mr. Berman suggested as well. But I think that would be very helpful to be able to look at quickly so that if something were to be suggested for town meeting floor in November, we'd have enough information to evaluate. Yeah, I can do some of that now, but I probably shouldn't do all, because I can't do all of it. I shouldn't try. But just to give you some round numbers, um, building security, as proposed for four million over ten years, uh, cost you five hundred sixty thousand in the first year, and it declines from there. <clears throat> Turf two, with its lighting, as proposed for two and a half million over five years, cost you six hundred thousand. So they're about interchangeable. The field lights for the rest of the four fields cost you three hundred thousand, a little more, three hundred thirty thousand over five years. So. You know, for one thing, I, you, know, you can always stretch out and borrow for longer. Well, there's certain rules, but for building security, we can borrow for longer than 10 years, I'm fairly sure. So the other two, I know we can bother longer than five years. Um, you know, that's just, you know, to use what Bill Brown's thinking of through his mind is putting a noose on the future taxpayer. So that's why I like to borrow for shorter amounts, plus you pay less interest. Right. Um, but you can fit in more capital or finance like debt if you string it out for a longer period of time. Right. Or, or town meeting could also authorize the use of additional funds that's in correct. the first year because as you look at the turf two, it's budgeted for 2021 going out five years. To bring it in a year, it's possible to use, let's say, free cash as an correct. example. Yeah. So that could be another source of funds. And if, we, the, and if we bring it in a year and then stretch it out over longer years, you're actually going to free up a little more space right. you do both. in the first five years and a lot less in the second five years. So you juggle a capital plan. But all of this is possible. It's really a question of what's the priority of the community. Yeah, I, I think one of the issues that's come up is 
we seem to, at least in the room, the discussion has been building security is, is, is high priority. There's a concern about safety on turf too. Um, so it may be a situation of both as opposed to which one. And then in the both scenario, there may be very good discussion about how broad the scope needs to be. It might need to just be turf two. I oh, can see why you approached it looking for flexibility because this whole discussion leads to us needing to be flexible so that we can react to situations because there's a lot of factors involved. So building in flexibility is critical. Um, I, I was curious about um, the flexibility question, um, flexibility of a timeline for decision making. So it sounds like for ground to be broken on turf two for next summer, we would have to have authorization in November. Uh, with respect to building security, would we be able to wait until the spring and hear from our legislators updates on the likelihood of, of bond money and then react at that point in time for an authorization at April? meeting yeah I, I don't think there's really any season if you will for the building security you can do it whenever you want right we don't have to wait for now a, to ask for debt authorization in November requires a special town meeting at this point just so that's clear because okay. we didn't put it in the town meeting warrant right. again we hadn't this was a nice simple armchair exercise where we do building security because everyone knows that's more important and we do the recreational stuff in another year and a half because that'll come along and all of a sudden things change okay. um, it's really hard to be able to predict and put things in four months, three months in advance, and it will warrant for something you don't think you need for two years. But the select board has an ability to call for a special town meeting inside the town meeting if it wishes to. Um, it's getting real close because town meeting's just around the corner. I, I don't remember the deadlines, but it would probably have to either be next week or uh, certainly by the 30th, and that might not be tight enough. We might have to have a special meeting. So this is not something we planned out or anticipated. Um, the other alternative is, this will take some discussion, but you can ask for some kind of seed money in November under articles that exist to start work on and put an RFP out on, and then it would just be subject to funding. Now, I don't know if you get significantly different bids when it's money that's already been approved versus money that's subject, but we do the subject stuff all the time. Um, specifically in water and sewer, where we need a long lead time for some of the work, and we don't ask town meeting until we understand the scope. Um, so it is possible to go to a November town meeting without another article, and ask for some kind of seed money to begin the work, and I couldn't begin to tell you what that is. I think we'll have to sit down and talk about it. Um, and then just wait for the authorization still till April. But you can't start the process in April, was my comment. It has to start in November. Yeah. Would FinCon be willing to consider uh, taking some action towards getting turf to uh, repair next summer? So repaired or replaced? Replaced. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Replaced. Yeah. Yeah. Replaced. Yeah. I think that, that's what I was kind of guiding it toward. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so. I just, um, so, so Bob, I, I like the suggestion of the seed money approach in November. Um, for right, uh, for for uh, for a number of reasons. One is, you know, we've got a lot of imperfect information here. Right, we we haven't yet explored whether there's Austin prep options to you know buy us another year. We haven't. Um, we don't have any visibility into what the timeline is going to look like for the for the. Uh, the state funding for, for the building security. Um, I'd be much more comfortable with seed money that gets us to a place where we are, can be shovel ready in April for, for that town meeting, um, for subsequent town meeting, than um, you know, being fairly aggressive about it in November, personally. Because um, we're, we're just gonna have much better information to talk, to talk to everyone about in April than we do today That's around all these topics. Yeah, I, I can comfortably say that whatever is the will of the room or the community, I can make a way to make it happen within the budget that's projected. Um, it's going to mean borrowing differently than we had anticipated, that's all. 
Uh, but in terms of meeting the time frame, I can't do that unless there's money up front so that we can get to work on some portion as soon as we expect it. Um, the building security does not need the upfront money because there is no season and deadline. So I'm comfortable asking for whatever it is in April for that. And again, whether we wait then because of the legislators, I'm open-minded. Um, the last thing, again, we want to do is borrow money when we didn't have to, because then you have to spend it. So I just, um, whether we receive money in November or <coughs> I think we have to recognize that, you know, starting the end of this week, there's going to be more cost to repair that field um, because the water damage is is been significant, and those costs are real, and our kids can't keep the field. We need to be resources in front of the school. We have to be busing. We're transporting students. We need to be taking care of the by themselves. When you think about the complexity of that, the complexity of, you know, uh, Tom Zaya has to restructure the sports schedules because you can't play on this field, you know. So uh, there is a tremendous amount of rework that goes on that we're not counting that cost right now, but we're incurring it in a very real way. Less the fact that the kids can't use the field or that potentially, you know, they're not getting the cushion that they need as they run the fall. So, um, I, I think that we need to do something in November that gets the process moving so that we can address this issue in the summer. Um, whichever way it is, uh, I think we need to move. And because we've been fooling ourselves to thinking that it's not costing us money. Um, now it has already. Do you mind if I just ask you to take a three minute break and some of us have a discussion? Mm -hmm. That'd be all right? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you should take a three minute break.
we're all set. Okay. Um, I like complicated problems. Mm -hmm. uh, to solve what's in front of us uh, tonight, we can do some of it, but obviously we can't do all of it. Uh, I think for $200,000, I feel like I'm shopping. For $200,000, um, we can Sold. design walk on turf too. Do I hear 250? <laughs> um, luckily, Gail brought all the construction bid documents. So 200,000 would be the design work at November town meeting. Um, as you heard earlier, we have more revenues. We have savings in health insurance. It's not a big problem bringing it up. Um, the complication is not doing the 3.9 million together. Some assumptions were made in all of the financial stuff we did and operational stuff. Um, it assumed um, doing all the lights first. If turf two is gonna be done by itself, which is fine, and the lights of turf two are done, then you can't do the other field lighting the same way we have it designed, because that field is no longer available to move through exactly. and to build yeah. on. Um, so we can't give you an answer tonight by any means for what that 1.4 million will become, but it's gonna be a higher number for sure. Um, that's, that's really where we are now. Um, we can have more information for you on the floor of town meeting. Um, you, you can choose to do with the 200,000 tonight. It's, it's a little bit odd to just propose something like this on the fly, but we do have documents that show it. But we'll do our best for the floor of town meeting to get you that other piece of information. I think that's gonna be difficult. Uh, the 1.4, you know, it's money, but it's also logis logistics. Um, I don't think any other solution in the short run, other than fixing turf two, is going to fix the problem of not having turf two. Um, you know, whether it's Austin Prep or anywhere else, the fields have limited. You know, sure, we could use some lights down at uh, Parker if the neighborhood would be fine with that, and that could be during construction or something else. But it's not much of a long-term solution. And the other thing we can look at is this may um, push the whole entire project. <coughs> Less, in, less perfectly into the fall, we may have to shut turf to the fall and eliminate all the athletics and recreation uses for it because we don't know if a vote in April town meeting with authorization that clears all the legal hurdles by May is in sufficient time to really do work that summer. So there's, there's, I would say, a reasonable probability, maybe even a high one, that we cancel the fall season. Which again, if it's going to be shut down at some point forever, and you have to shut it down next fall, it's a cost of doing business. So that's that's all I can really say after some good input uh, for tonight. Good question. If if that approach is taken, we do the this kind of study, get it started, and we find out that April would be too late. Conceivably, the selectmen could call a special town meeting. They could. Yes. January, February, whenever it's going to snow. Right, right. We'll pick the appropriate date. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they could. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I've tonight, it seems like turf two is an obvious and urgent need, um, but the other expenses um, around Lighting, you mean? The lighting and the, the first matter of overall lighting. So, the, the lighting. Yeah. so regardless of whether or not the point nine has already been authorized, is it prudent to 
extend it. Just because it's been uh, it was authorized a couple of years ago, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best use of fund now. For two <laughs> and I think you, you made the, the point before also that um, all of the Birch Meadow plans, would, it would make sense to review them all kind of in, in total to see what is being discussed and then see what, what the feelings are about that. It's not the immediate safety issue that we're discussing related to that. Go ahead. So I, I have to say that I don't know a lot about the lighting project, and I think it's my, I'm going to get to the plan I'm going to say softball, it's an adult now, maybe the lights. But is it, what's that impact of not doing that on the, I mean, I don't know that the recommendation is here, but I would assume that that part of that was important to you for creation. So if that gets disconnected and then never doesn't get done, it doesn't get done from some extended period of time. I don't know how that impacts the youth sports. I don't know that it impacts the school sports uh, unless we need the lights and the fall uh, next So hopefully the, this full discussion of Birch Meadow and lighting in that presentation would bring up those topics. Because right now, that's not scheduled till 2021 anyway. So I think that what I'm hearing, it's also some rest for myself, <laughs> um, is that there's a lot of discussion that's going to go on about the lights. And it would be great to understand much more completely what's happening with that. So that, I think that's exactly what should happen. We should get that information. I do like the idea of I do like the idea of allocating whatever that right figure is, whether it's two hundred thousand seat money for November, so that we can see where we're at. Okay, when when FinCom gets to that part of your meeting on the morning articles, we'll just change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why why are you smiling so? And this is <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought we'd spend some of this capital plan in two years. Uh, is there any other, I, I knew capital would be interesting. Is there any other discussion on capital? Because uh, this really would wrap up the financial forum portion if, if there isn't. Um, just so I understand, um, whether or not FinCom needs to meet before town meeting, which is probably unlikely, uh, on the floor of town meeting would ask you to come in early, um, 7 o'clock, maybe even 6.30. And we'll try to get you some information to make sure that 200,000 is, is a good number, although I can show you that later. But really, the impact on splitting the 3.9 million into a couple parts and doing one of them clearly first and one of them clearly second, and just so you understand the implications of that, we'll do our best to get that handled. So we'd, we'd have a better understanding of what that 1.4 yeah. could and turn into. And also then spend some time with financial engineering and show you how things can all fit in yeah. if you want them to. But just to be clear, this whole discussion has nothing to do with money outside the levy. This is all right. inside the levy. It's not money that would go to anything else. It's meant for capital. This just happens to be the capital priorities that are left that are not spoken to. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bob. Any, anything else on the, on the capital plan or what we've discussed so far? So I think that takes us to the conversation about um, free cash in 2020, right? True. So last, last meeting, FinCom had an abbreviated discussion about how much free cash to use. Now you have a lot more information. Again, you're looking at three and a quarter percent if you use a million with a 0.15% difference to use 100,000 more. And just to remind you, it's obvious, but if you use more free cash than that, you're building a cliff. 
we have to then continue to use that amount of free cash every year, or we're going to have to reduce the operating budgets in the future. Would you mind taking that up just a little bigger? Yeah, please. And Bob, I do want to drive home the point that you made earlier that the override was a very generous um, response from the community and it allows us to increase the baseline to you know, have positions we knew we were short and that we can fill those. It does not change what we expect to be our general increase each year at, let's say, something like 3% would be great compared to some of the recent years we've had. So that sustainability of 3%-ish is still critical. The override doesn't change that. It yes, just and the biggest reason the that the override amounts changed was we did not try to build in sustainability. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. You can always figure you're safe for three years, but the first time we were safe for 10 to 12 years. Um, this was a conscious effort to tell the taxpayer do the best we can, but we might be seeing you sooner than you otherwise would have seen us. Any thoughts from the committee on on the on the, on the one million as proposed? Um, and also, as we saw from the town accountant, our, our levels of free cash currently might suggest any thoughts or ask for any thoughts about uh, potential one-time uses. So um, I think the million dollars is in line. I certainly would not raise it any higher than that. I don't think we need 1.2. I think a million dollars supports the budget um, quite nicely, um, even looking out a year or two from there. So I think that's the number that I would personally see as, as being about right. Um, in terms of other uses um, of existing free cash, it may be that the to get the uh, the turf, the safety issue, into the same year as the uh, building security. To me, that might be an interesting way to, to propose using a little bit of free cash to one-time activity. That would keep us on the same five-year debt plan, possibly, as an option. Um, and all it does is kind of bring it up a year. So that, I, I would, in my opinion, that might be an interesting use. Agreed. I think that the, we talked about a lot of the, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm comfortable with the, with the million. I think that that's, that is the right number. And to Bob's point, keep it, you know, don't, don't create a cliff type situation. I do think that we talked about a lot of the one-time uses for free cash that, that might pop up in the future, which is, again, a, a reason to keep the, the amount we're putting into the budget or offering up in the budget as low as we possibly can at this point. So. I don't think we have enough information to talk about what the next uses are. I feel like there's far too many paths that we could go down and, and, and you know, get caught up in. So I think it's a wait and see situation, but I do feel about what the budget number. So Bob, if we were to go, if we were to go to a higher use of free cash, it only creates a cliff if the select board sets the levy to the limit. Right, there could be an offset there. That would allow you to keep it relatively yeah. you know, stable that's year an over year. Interesting way to look at it. Yes, you're right. So, you know, I have four days. They're doing it next Tuesday. <laughs> right. Um, you, you know, so it's one one thought here, right? Which is, you know, we we did ask the community for an override, which was. Um, still pretty significant, although not as much as the first one, as you noted. Um, you know, we, we've, we, we keep talking about how some of these positions aren't coming online this year. You know, one approach might be to say, we're in a good spot in terms of free cash, in terms of reserves. Do we go a little heavy in this first year and allow that, you know, increased tax burden coming from uh, the override to kind of phase in a little bit more? With the suggestion being that select board considers setting the levy below the limit. I will say you're very late in the process to I know. suggest this. I know. What's well, the first time you asked me how much free cash to spend? <laughs> yeah, you, 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 
to do that. And Bill had an interesting idea last week about um, the FEMA grant for the firefighters possibly setting up a stabilization fund or honestly adding it to the existing stabilization fund uh, when those revenues come in instead of just letting them effectively flow through. So there are a lot of moving parts. I have to tell you, most of this stuff is good news, though. I mean, 32 being in bad shape is not good news, but you know, instead of throwing up our hands and wailing, we have a lot of options that we didn't have. So this, this is a good situation to be in. Um, and just to remind you, um, presuming state aid falls short again, and if health insurance is worse than we thought, that's going to be another use of your free cash. Yeah, that's a good reminder that, that just those two points, if state aid comes in lower or health insurance comes in higher, we traditionally kind of pledge free cash to, to fill those gaps. Paul? Uh, just kind of echo Mark's comments before that, you know, I, I think it's a reasonable approach to go in, but moving on to the next piece of it, that things like building security and, and turf two and then the safety of those fields seem like certainly appropriate uses of free cash when and if that, that time comes a bit more. So I would certainly support that. That take us then with free cash. Do I need a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion that we use a million dollars of free cash to balance the FY20 budget. Second. Second from Mark. Further discussion? The committee. All those in favor? Opposed? Is that eight one seven one? Seven. Sorry, I did not oppose. You did not. You, you were in favor. Yeah. Right. Seven one. I think it was seven one in favor. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. I think this concludes the financial forum. Yeah. If anyone wants to stay around for the exciting remainder, please feel free to the warrant. Those points in Yeah. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so two And then Friday. So you're going to We should finish this. Yeah. 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 Stops us from doing it next year. My general inclination would be. And then my only other concern is the next time we do Two approaches that get you the same answer, probably, but. So, anyway. It's great discussion. Yeah. That's the form. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Move on to the Warren articles. Yeah. 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 Seems like we should be cozier. Uh, first, uh, first article would be Article 3. Revision we sent today, which was the DPW security uh, item going up a little more. We pumped up to 143. Um, Joe's gone. I'm trying to think of whether the 200,000 should be capital or operating for the study. It could typically be capital, but that's okay. So I want to add in here 200,000 more um, for oh. facilities. Uh, to get design work done on turf two, so that would bring the total to 343,000 for FY19 on the start writing list. Sorry, so. Uh, so you're comfortable with us voting on this tonight, even though you'll probably you have to. You can certainly wait till the floor, but we just looked at numbers. And 200, 180 to 230 was the range, and 200 was spot on. Some of it. I don't okay. think you're going to get different information on that. Okay. Whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, then yeah. you get that kind of information. Right. So, Bob, that'd be 200 on top of the 113? On top of the 143, and right on the... Yeah, we need to turn the screen. Oh, okay, so we, our, what we have is not as current. Um, got it. We've got one today that had 143 instead of 88, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, not 88. Um, oh, right, but um, not in the big so, pack. 
113th. Not in so our packet shows 113th. So you have a more current slide. The packet was the one handed out today, though. It's not, it doesn't have it in there. No. Yeah, the only, the only the only difference is our yes. our packet says 25 for DPW garage security, and you've got 55 here. Huh. That's um, if you go to bid 17, on toward the back of the packet, page 17, past the power points. Oh, wait, yeah, wait. I'm not. I'm not no. denying that 55 is a number. I'm just saying. I'm just helping people identify what the difference yeah. is. We're looking at 113. Right. So the delta of 30 is driven by this version saying 55 for DPW garage security, and our version saying 25. So, so, so 55 and 143 D are the numbers. Um, say that last part again. 55 for DPW garage security and correct. 143 is correct until you add until, the 200,000. Um, are there any questions about any of the pages? So it's 343. Yeah. Right. Any other questions on anything else here? Yeah. You sure that's the right number for the uh, bloom flail mower? <laughs> you just wanted to see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, just blue, is it blue? <laughs> is it blue? <laughs> That's why or blue? It is a tongue twister. <laughs> Is that a new or a used boom flail? Mode? <laughs> <laughs> you can use either, actually. It's just an add-on. Um, we haven't discussed, so I do want to discuss uh, the enterprise funds. Yeah. Um, you can see, uh, oh, maybe you can't see the screen, but we had um, we had our money money set aside for Emerald Law for booster station. Um, to cut to the chase, we could not get certain electrical wiring out of our own it just wasn't possible or it wasn't nearly economic. So we had to change our approach. It's costing another 145000 to do this project. Um, to rewind in case anyone's not familiar with this, there's very little water pressure in some of the area around actually where I live. This is two blocks away, County Road. Uh, and there was two solutions. One is to do what has been proposed, and the other was to do two different booster stations. And this was the cheaper option when it cost 145000 less. Now it's about the same, but they've got it all designed. So for 145000 they can complete the work on this. Um, they ran into um, just a little bit of a pricing. You know, we're seeing with the price of steel going up. You know, some things are increasing in price. Trucks and cars being one, so another 5,000 is necessary uh, to replace this truck, but that's in next year's budget. Um, as I mentioned, we're delaying the downtown two improvements out. Um, sewer, they need another 18,000. Some of that's just inflation. Some of it is a change in design to standardize their truck. So the new price would be 60000 and the capital plan had about 42000 um, really spent a lot of time on it. Um, water and sewer enterprise funds, uh, reserve funds are very healthy. There's mm -hmm. know, four, three or four million in each. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a consequence. So that cleans up Article 3. Before you vote, let me just do four so you get a full picture kind of a vote. Um, all right, we just added 200,000 under capital, so I'll have to make that addition. We'll also have to find 200,000. Um, do you care whether it comes from revenues or cutting expenses? Because we have lots of flexibility. Well, I'll suggest we find 50,000 from interest earnings and 150,000 from less health insurance. Because that's, both of those are easy to do. So. 50. I'm not going to try to do all the math because I'm sure I'll do it. This will be a $205,000 reduction. Um, and then we'll increase this by $200,000. And I'll just have to redo it for the town meeting warrant. I don't want to try to do it. Yeah, that's true. We're fortunately in a position where another 200,000 doesn't even require free cash, we just need to pitch it. Rob, can you 
and I'm sorry if this is rehashing, but the whole cell tower cancellation, uh, but still there's money needed. Is it so? It, it's the project's not happening, but we still have to fix things so that the uh, tower. We're not going to do a cell tower, but we're going to still have to move our telecom equipment off the water tank onto some temporary structure that the telecom vendors will now build, and then move to it back or replace it. So we saved the cost of the tower, but not the cost of moving the equipment, which was a portion of the cost of the tower. When, when, when was the last time we painted that? Like, when are we going to incur that, those kind of 15, dollars? We're never going to paint it again. Oh, okay. We're buying, um, I don't know how to say what the name of it is, but something that doesn't need to be painted. Okay. Um, you know, that'll be tricky, too, because of the price of steel. We think we budgeted okay with enough cushion, but, you know, they're saying steel is going up 20 to 50 percent so far. So that's a portion of the cost of the new water tank. I think we're okay. We have not gone out to bid. We just learned, we just met with uh, the vendors, and they're all merging and consolidating, so there's less of them. Uh, they still want a lot of stuff on the towers. Um, they're not going to be ready nearly as fast as we had hoped. So that project may also slow down. I think the way we've got it budgeted is OK, but it's possible that by April town meeting, we may have to make a change and slow it down. Because of the telecom? Excuse me? Because of the telecom? Because the telecom companies can't get their act together as fast as we had hoped to agree to do all this work. You know, we, they thought we were building a tower. Now we're not. We're making them do it. They have to get a lot of legal documents signed between each other and us. And generally, they do this in other communities, so it's not like it's not possible. Right. They're just giving us timelines based on a typical community that is much slower than we expected. And we'll hope to do better, right. as we hope we're a little better organized. But we'll see. So, sorry, walk us through the changes you're making there to get the 200000 Okay, right. Yeah. So, we're going to reduce health insurance 200000 Retirement's up 40 And then from there on, it's up 5.3% a year. Uh, we already really talked about the capital. So, health insurance from a we're down 25 to a... current budget down by 205000 instead of just 55000 55. And as I said earlier, there is slack in the health insurance budget. That doesn't concern me. It just means we might not be able to do as much in April for snow and ice as we otherwise would have hoped. To be we're, look at, we're looking at minus 25. Yeah, um, it's the yeah, same, it's the same when 30. You, when you add in the DPW security study going up 30, that became a 55. Right. This used to be a minus 25. Got it. Right. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Right. And you had said up front you could take more, but there was no reason. Now we have exactly. a reason. <laughs> yeah. We created yeah. a reason. Yeah. yeah. So when the, this is just, you know, a piece of this was paying for the DPW. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I missed the connection there. Then All right, 20 so 20 that's 255 now? Uh, 205. 205. 205. 205. And then you got the other 50 out of interest. Yeah. We're we're got it. So now the 100 is a 150. Let's see, capital's done. Do you want to talk about TLT just for a second? And by the way, I rounded this number up like $500 higher than you needed just because it balanced. Okay. So in your packet, um, there was a request for the TLT um, settlement and where those funds came from. Just kind of give you an idea of um, all the moving pieces related to that. That's the third to last page of your time packet, page 18. Is anybody is your printout um, legible? Mine's a little bit. Um, I, I did print actually copy it, but it's not. So what's it numbered? Yeah. All right. Page eighteen. Almost so, there. Again. Second page. Okay. Page. So page. the settlement was for six million dollars, and so we had used um, just under two point two million dollars of free cash towards that settlement. And then there was 803,395.06 remaining in the high school project capital fund was used towards the settlement. And then we borrowed. Um, so we borrowed um, net of the premium, or we put the premium towards the cost. So we borrowed one, one million three fifty-five, and then we used the hundred and fifty-five thousand dollar premium towards the settlement. And then there was a portion of it um, that 
we were asked to ban because the MSBA owed us money because we hadn't paid everything. They had paid us everything. I um, mean, we had originally planned on just reducing, because um, it was excluded debt, um, the burden on the taxpayer. They wanted us to use that funds towards this. And so we, we kind of give um, the tax relief to the taxpayer um, by leaving some of the levy on the table. So we did it that way, kind of a roundabout sort of way. And so um, we, bought, we banned, which is a temporary borrowing, 1.49 um, for their portion, because that's about how much they owed us. Um, but when the time came um, for them to reimburse us, there were things that were disallowed, and so that we had a shortfall. Um, and so um, you'll see at November town meeting, you'll see that we are asking for um, an additional 100 and I forget what the exact amount is. 70,000. Yeah, 170, 953 with the shortfall plus the interest for the ban um, that we had to borrow. So below you can see like the detail of the ban, which was 1,490. Um, we had 20,032 for the interest for that ban. And the amount that we received back from the MSBA was 1,339,079. And that shortfall is what you'll see on the article um, for November town meeting that we're asking to fund that shortfall. The other piece that I, I was told that you were interested in is to see what those debt payments look like. Um, so on the left-hand side of that um, chart is just the debt payment reschedule. We borrowed at one and a half, um, and so we pay roughly 135,000 each year in principal payments, and you can see the varying amounts of interest obviously declining as we pay it down in 2027. I don't know if that was a concern in terms of doing something um, to cover the principal payments, but I just wanted to make sure that you understood all the moving parts, and did that answer the question that you were asking? Because I wasn't there for the question. I want to make sure I give you what you're looking for. So. The, the principal and interest payments are the end of this settlement. We will be mm -hmm. fully finished with. Because we borrowed that one million three fifty five. That's what what sits on our books as debt service. What you see there. Got it. And there's nothing else that MSBA or anybody else could potentially no, be paying it's us. It's because done. Because MSBA, once they paid us what they paid us, they this, this is a closed matter now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It'll be close for everybody. The other uses of funds, 20000 for um, vocational school in Wakefield, the enrollment's a little higher. Property casualty insurance premiums are up a little more. The workers' comp is down a little more. The total is about what we expected. Um, Sharon's had a very difficult time hiring a clerical position, so we're asking to uh, upgrade the position, and that would cost $8,000. We have this very nasty habit right now of having people accept jobs and never never show up. <gasps> yeah. It's happened at least five times in the organization in this last six months. Are you kidding me? Five times in six months. <laughs> just happened to me today. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it's no. a very strong labor market. <laughs> Way. So we hold our breaths when someone says they're going to start in this day and, you know, they're a little late we start getting worried. They don't even wow. tell us. That's just the That's world we're in now. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, the labor markets are strong. If it comes around, I hope the people of that age don't behave that way. I, exactly. Know, That's right. Well Jeez. Um, we had a That's patrol car cool. damage that was put out of action. Um, insurance will pay about 31000 but we need 43000 to replace it, unfortunately. And that includes equipping it. It's not just buying the car. So the net of all this, and I know these numbers need some updating, but the net of all this is that all the revenues we talked about, um, the reduction in state aid, a slight decrease in state assessments, which is good, all pay for all these things we're asking to do. So there's no free cash change. Um, again, at water and sewer, the two capital items I just mentioned, uh, 145000 out of water, $18,000 out of sewer. So that gives you a, a pretty full picture of the financial moving parts that's November 10th. Um, you want me to just keep going and you can do the article quotes at the end? Can I ask a question okay. first on um, Article 4? Okay, it's okay. So can we just take a look at the lines? So.
So the decrease on that first B99 is now 195, 100? Where are you looking, Mark? Uh, B99. Um, Then 343. And then your subtotal now. So that should be the new subtotal, 169. You know, each of these sides will go up 200,000. Well, this will go up 200,000. I'm sorry, this will go up 150,000. This will go up 200,000. And then we have 50,000 more revenue down below. Mm -hmm. So this number will go up 50,000. And this number will go up 50,000. Yeah. What's hard is that we uh, the sheet we have is actually different from the one yeah. you have up there, so we're, we're like one gen now. behind. No, actually, the one I'm looking at that we're looking at looks a lot different. So we, have, we have we have like two generations ago slide. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't look like the right version. It's the one that was handed to me. Okay, yeah, that's the best one. Maybe we handed up to them. So the, is that, okay, 160. three for a sec first and we'll come yeah. back. So net on article three, the fiscal year nineteen is up three forty three. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And fiscal twenty stays at minus sixty five. Okay, that's article three. Let's go to four. Sixty-nine nine. So hopefully, one sixty-nine nine plus four twenty-two five eighty-six is five ninety-two four eighty-six. In which case, everything's fine. So it's up two twenty. Yep. yep. Wait, wait, wait. That's about right. <coughs> yeah, that's right. So it's up two hundred from so this needs to the uh, turf field, and it's up this. twenty. Um, right, it's a 20 from the, um, I'm losing my words, from our the DPW garage, which went from 25, mm -hmm. to, so it's up 30, sorry, so 30, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so actually, I think it, it, is it 592, is it 6 up to? The, the, I think so. The, there was two 30s in there that are offsetting from our version. The DPW garage is 55, and yeah. it already adjusted the health insurance. Got premiums to 55 as well. Got it. Yep. Minus 55, I should say. So it's a wash at this point. Yeah, yeah, so those 30s washed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 426. Less than 5. 422, 586, because we've sourced some from above. So the total increase. So now 420. So it moved by 50K. Because we 
recognize another 50k in interest. You scroll up just a inch. Yep, right. Uh, oh, sorry, other way down toward the bottom. Sorry, just looking at the. Okay, there you go, right there. Number 150. Yeah, so the interest went from 100 to 150. Oh, 20 months. Okay, and then nothing else changed. The enterprise fund numbers are the same. Correct. Question is, there, is there some magic to this million forty number? Does it I mean, represent some it's planned it, expense, or is it just what the value of the? It's what's available from the okay. array. They, I don't know if it's a total of three hundred million is what they start with, and then they divide it all up okay. by usage and by community. Okay. Um, a million would have been around there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if town meeting wants to vote. I'm sorry, if Fincom wants to vote on Article Ten, um, I thought I'd at least show it to you. 
is the before and the after picture up there of the property. It's a little hard to see in black and white. Um, Redding owns the front, very tiny portion of this lot. It's on Brook Street. Wakefield owns all the rest, and they have to give Brook Street a different name, so they call it Redfield Road. Oh Even though there's no such thing, but it is as a map on a map for their GIS system. So the home is in Wakefield. The very front strip is in Redding, and I think it's assessed at something like five hundred dollars. Um, we took this property several years ago, both of us in tax title, without being aware of each other. So for us, we just owned a strip in the front. We never thought about it again. Having the same assessor is very beneficial sometimes. He says, ah, double counting. The town administrator, he and I sat down and had breakfast and said, you know, we should do something about this. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually have put this parcel, both parcels, out to bid at $151,000, renting it get a fraction of that, $20,000, just based on square feet. Um, the alternative to doing the way we had to do it, which seemed complicated, was why don't we just give the land to Wakefield? And that actually would have required, I don't know, a constitutional convention. To board, remove the border of a town is an oh incredibly gosh. complex thing that never happens. So much as we would like to give them something worth $500, it wasn't going to happen. So the good news is there's, there's a happy buyer of this parcel. I don't know what their plans are, but I'm, I'm sure it's not to just knock the house down and have it be vacant. Um, Reading will get a very small uh, tax benefit annually instead of it sitting in tax title, a very small deposit. Um, once we see the cash, probably to the sale of real estate fund in the spring. It's, it's not really about the money, it's about putting a productive house back in the place, not only for who buys it, but for the neighbors. You see what it used to look like. It was awful. Um, this is the only such parcel we have like this in Reading. And never really heard of anything quite like this. I asked DPW, could you go trim that a little? And that's what they did. <laughs> Don't say to DPW, please just give it a little trim. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not going to go in there for a haircut. Trim, <laughs> I said, please trim in the front where we own. Yeah, I was just saying. Yeah. <laughs> they went around the back. <laughs> Wakefield didn't mind once they found it. Wow. So I don't know if that's really a financial issue, but there are dollars involved, so I thought it should be this year. So you're looking at articles 3 through 10 without the one for um, prior years. Can you do one at a time? Sure. Any, any questions from anybody on that? I need a question, Bob. Are we going to get this? Will we, will we feel reimbursed? That's for all that work. I'm sorry, say well, it again. Wakefield reimbursed. That's probably, I mean, that's expensive work. You take down trees. I know what it costs to take down one tree in my house, um, let alone. It's, it's free yeah. when, they're, when they're at work wishing they could do things like this. Yeah. It really okay. cost it's, 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 fine. it's labor, it's equipment, it's all part of the deal. You want to guess how long it took? Uh, I, I, I did. Less. <laughs> What's that? Whatever you guess, the answer is less time than you think. Really? One hour. Really? Way less. In an hour? What? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Well, all right, all right, fine, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, have, they have professional equipment. I was going to say. That is pretty much. I honestly, when I looked at that, I was like, oh, that's a day's work yeah. right there. <laughs> Thanks, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, move to accept Article 3 as presented up there. So the next is 343,000 fiscal 19. At positive and minus 65 in fiscal 20. Second. Second. Further discussion? None appearing. All those in favor? Eric, you want to sign reports now? As well. Yeah. So I think that was 8 0. And uh, any volunteers to take this one? If not, we'll just start at one end of the table and work down the other. Sure, end. I'll take it. Paula. All right, move to accept Article 4 as presented up there with a net that we expect to be net operating expenses 422,586. Second. Further discussion? None appearing. All those in favor? Eight zero again. I can take that one, Bob. Or friend. Right, that was 
plus four, right? right. Um, no vote on five. Plus one. I got the report on four. Yeah. Paula's got it on three. Mm -hmm. Uh, move to accept Article 6 as written. Second. Further discussion? Pairing. All those in favor? 8 0. Volunteers? I can take that one. That's Ann. Like oh. I guess I do. <laughs> I, I want that Crown Victoria for her. Oh, for her. Oh. <laughs> Uh, move to accept Article 7 as written. Did you get for 6? Yeah, Ann's got this. Yeah, right. Further discussion on Article 7. Not appearing. All those in favor? 8 0. Volunteers? Paul's got it. Except Article 8 as written. Second. All right. Somebody got there. <laughs> Further discussion, Article 8. Not appearing. All those in favor? 8 0. I'll take it. Dan. Oh, Dan's taking Dan's it. Dan's got it. Dan's got it. Dan's got it. Spoke first. Just by a hair. All right, Dan. What do you think about 10? It's money that we're going to receive. Yep. Let's take the money. Did we skip one? Which one? We missed nine. We missed nine. So we just, oh yeah, oh, so we nine, just did sorry. eight. That's the I yeah. and I. Yep. It's kind of like so move to accept pages. Article 8. Nine. Oh, sorry. Nine. nine. That was eight. So nine is written. Yeah. Second. Further discussion, Article 9. None appearing. All those in favor? That's 8-0. I'll do I and I. And Mark Scott, Article 9. And move to accept Article 10 as written. Second. Further discussion? Then appearing, all those in favor? That's 8 0. I'll get that one. And Sean will take Article 10. I don't have to be on town meeting, right? Not actually on town meeting. Okay. You do not. I'm not actually on town meeting. That's not a problem. Doesn't matter. No, I didn't think no, so. Not okay. This. All right. Just don't be voting on the articles. That's right. <laughs> and Bob, I did want to mention something. So, in our packet, I thought we had a nice overview of the capital projects showing in the levy, no funding identified. We took with the slides. They just took a little bit of a different slice. So I realized a lot of people were not as clear as we were. So I think something along this line was um, very clear to show what's in the left. What we handed out tonight, if people got the handouts, was uh, two pages, both sides, so four pages. We had the three pages of expenses, um, revenues, and operating budgets. And then had a one-page summary of the capital, which is just those tables. What you got was the tables plus a three or four or five-page memo. Um, the document that looks like you have in your hand is that what everyone in the audience should have received. Oh, okay. If it's oh, okay. just a one-page summary, they should uh, have received that. It's a two-page. Yeah, just, you know, it's stating right up front what's in the levy and what's not so that um, there's not that confusion. They just got the portions of the tables of that, of that page and then the next page is a tiny bit of a difference. Yes. Yeah. So they got that. To they did. Okay. So they might not have been able to look at it because I felt like there was some confusion. I didn't think they would want a six or eight page write up. Oh, no, agreed. But just stating up front yeah. clearly what's in levy, what's not, so that you don't get to this discussion of what, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I know that it is um, confusing sometimes, or I don't know what the right word is. You, know, you all know that 200,000, this has nothing to do with killing. It can't. Now, you can put some seed money for kill them or whatever comes along um, inside the level. If we have free cash mm -hmm. and they need a right. million dollars for design, you can do that. But you're not going to be able to do whatever the project is right. inside the levy. There's just no way possible. So, and it, it is, it sounds like you're prioritizing, but it's really, you know, happens to put in. 
Okay. Well, thank All right. You. That takes some minutes. Yep. Motion to accept the minutes of September 26th as presented. I have actually just a couple of tweaks for the. Do I need a second? Tweaks for the Do I need a second? Second. Thank you. Sorry, I'm oh, okay. Um, so, Further discussion. Um, I just, and Paula, tell me if, if I'm mistaken. I thought um, it, somewhere here, I think it said that you suggested that the <laughs> town partner with churches to address space needs. And I think my recollection was that your suggestion was that the town look at what spaces are available in town um, before think, before moving on um, creating more com community meeting spaces if the, that need could be met through other spaces available in town and you provided church meeting spaces as examples more yeah, so, so than... Yeah, so where are you referring to? The, the middle of the first paragraph on the left. Oh, here we go. Oh, Ms. Terry, I'm going to look at partnering with churches to address space needs. I think you did provide Oh, yeah, yeah, things. yeah, I would agree. So partnering with Community. other uh, communities. Owners communities. of other community space property, space. for example, churches yeah. to address space needs. Um, the only, and then the, so that was one suggestion. And then I, if others don't think, don't think this could be misleading, I just don't want folks who read this to think that um, my request yeah. led to the 5% of operational override being worked into debt and capital planning. And I don't think mm. literally that's what this says, but just to maybe there's a little bit of a language tweak to make clear yeah. that it was, you know, in responding yeah, in to response Ms. Landry's question. question. Yeah, either that or just take the first four words out. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. Strike the first four. You yeah, you could just take out the. For Ms. Landry's request, or you know, in, in response, response to, to a question by Ms. Landry, something like that. All right. So how do we do this? Do we need a proposal to? Not you. No. Yeah. It's as long as we can respond to the question. Is more complete. Yeah. If you mm -hmm. really ask the question, I can't. I did ask a question yeah. about it, so it was in fact in response <laughs> yeah. to a question that I asked. So my question is, do we need to? Interesting misunderstanding too. Mm -hmm. Do we it's probably not really necessary, but just for for, for clarity. <laughs> Do we need to agree and vote on specific wording changes? We don't use, I think if we, oh, I could say um, move to um, move to accept the minutes as drafted, subject to the revisions we just discussed. Is that sufficient? Do you want to decide what the words are? In response to Ms. Landry's question? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure, that works. And, and what was the other issue? The other, um, Ms. Perry recommended, or if, I don't know if you want to. You're probably better words. <laughs> Ms. Perry <laughs> recommended that the town look at partnering with um, churches and other community organizations. organizations such as churches to address space. Well, so I have a motion that's seconded. In. Do we need another motion to? Oh, oh, Making this way too complicated. Yeah, no, we just never do. Yeah. These, these can all be friendly amendments. The minutes. And the okay, oh, that yeah. was a friendly, friendly amendment. Let me just look and see if anybody objects. Does anybody object to any of these uh, suggested changes? Good. <laughs> all right. So, uh, any further discussion on the minutes? None appearing. All those in favor of approving, um, accepting the friendly amendments. Eight zero. I think that's the question, actually. Yeah. So the meetings, the meeting schedule that's coming up. Yeah. Sorry, I'm busy. I didn't know. Did we just vote on the friendly amendments or no? We, we, did, all. we did all. Okay, we're good. Okay, cool. Meeting schedule. On page two of the slides. <laughs> yep. So those, we have those dates in December and January. Um, yep. Is it our intention to go to those meetings and post? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
quite as interesting as last year, but no harm in posting you. You're right. That's what's yeah. right. No big harm worth work, right? Posting. I think we might as well just post for everything. It makes okay. it easier. Mm -hmm. Everybody good with that? All right, so we'll post for the uh, the December meetings with the select board and the three January meetings with the school committee. Okay. And obviously, um, I put in there what the charter deadlines are. If you're going to start reviewing budgets on the 27th, you'll get it a couple weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Do we have a December? We do. We have the Tuesday, December 4th. We do. We, right. we do? You have a tentative meeting. Schedule. So actually, I have December 4th, Wednesday the 14th, and Tuesday the 4th. All right, and first day of town meeting is when? Is it before Thanksgiving? Thursday. Thursday the oh, wait, that's what's throwing me off. It's the 15th then? That sounds right. Yeah. Okay, so that's what. The 15th? I've got it marked that way, and I thought it didn't look right. Yeah, the 15th. All right, so December. So. And then the next one is when? Of town meeting. Monday. And then skip Thanksgiving. Right? That's that weird. Yeah, you know we start on Monday, right? Got some for sandwich in between holidays. Yeah. So I have us on the fourth and the fifth. And the eleventh and the twelfth. Oh, yeah. Um, so I have. I'm kind of, I can't. I need to be able to spell to get this to work. Eric, so I have meeting at six. Put six thirty for town meeting. Mm -hmm. This has already been decided. Mm -hmm. we need, yeah. Oh right. yeah. We may we may yeah. move to seven, but we should put six thirty post for. Post for six thirty for the. So, yeah. Cause yeah. I don't know how much we'll have. It could be a. Yeah. Good call, Mark. Good yep. amount. All right. So six thirty on the fifteenth. Trying to remember. This is tomorrow, Brendan's last day. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. oh you're oh, kidding. He's going to uh, work for Charlie and bring us back more stable. Oh, right. oh, go for it. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Congrats on the move. Wow. Oh. Thanks, guys. Wow. Oh. Where are you headed? That's well, we can talk after. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what you say. <laughs> I have a on Wednesday, November 14th is a regular meeting, so that probably is a no. You probably don't need that, but it's on the calendar. November 14th. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, so do I. And I actually wrote the word confirmed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we did talk. Yeah, good call. Yeah. So we won't, we won't meet on the 14th. Okay. I don't think you need to. Yeah, we'll okay. take care of the business on the 15th. do the town meeting stuff that night instead of waiting to the floor. Of, I tell you what, if I find out it's really a long meeting and complex, let's leave that open. Okay. Um, we'll let's touch that. base, though. We just yeah. yeah, okay. All right. So we'll leave the uh, November 14th on the books with a good possibility that'll be canceled and we'll come together at 6.30 on the 15th. And we'll post for 6.30 on the 15th. Makes sense. Okay. Good stuff. Indeed. Any other business? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor. 8-0, meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bobby.